Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. In video number 56 I introduced the NextGen smart displays and showed how we can use them based on an example file. In this video I will go into the details on how to build your own screens and how to write an Arduino sketch to use it in your projects. Please watch the first video number 56 if you did not do it yet. I start with a simple application. We want to press a plus or a minus key and then a number is changed accordingly. You remember we first have to program the NextGen display using an editor running on Windows and upload the resulting file to the display. Next we can then build our Arduino sketch and upload it to the board. Let's start with the files for the NextGen display. We first have to start the NextGen editor and create a new file. We call it button test. We are asked for the display we want to use. I have the 3.5 inch version and want to use it in horizontal orientation. Next we have to create the fonts we want to use. We start the font generator and select the font we like. I choose Consolas and the size 32. The rest of the fields are ok. When we generate the font we have to give it a name and a place to store. I store it at the same place as the HMI and the INO file in the Arduino sketch directory. Like that I have all project files in one place. Then we can import the font into our resources. From now on we can use it in our project. Next I want a nice background. I can either use an available picture or create one. Important is that it has the same dimensions as our display 480 times 320 in the case of the 3.5 inch display. As you know I am sometimes in Dubai. Therefore I use a picture from there. To work with it I use Inkscape. It is a free software to create these kind of pictures. I am sure that there are other programs available for this purpose. Here I define the needed format of 480 times 320 pixel and add the Dubai skyline and the logo. Then I save it as a PNG file and import it into the NextGen editor. The editor already created a page with the name page 0. Now we have to insert the picture with a double click. Then we add a text file and place it where it belongs. Next we need the two buttons. One button is the plus and the other one is the minus button. The size of the letters is 29 and the height is 47. I found these sizes by try and error. Because we want to interact with the button, we have to enable the send command ID. I enable it for both events, the pressing of the button and the releasing of the button. This way I can choose later in the Arduino sketch which event I will use. As a last step we have to make notes of the names of the different objects. The plus button for example has the name button plus and the ID 3. All objects are on page 0. Now we can simulate or debug our files and upload the resulting TFT file to the LCD. Last time I showed you how to do this using an SD card. This time I connect the NextGen board to a USB to serial connector and upload the file directly to the display. This is slower than with the SD card but for small files it is ok. The editor searches for a COM port and selects also the speed. Here we do not need to power cycle the LCD. Everything is done automatically and we see our screen right after upload. Now we can attach it 
to the Arduino Mega. As last time, I used this board because it has two serial connections and we can connect the connection to the serial 2 and use serial for debugging. For this video, I use the official NextGen library. You find a link to it in the comment. This library is not easy understandable for beginners, but if you start with the examples and use copy-paste, you should be able to write your code. To define the serial connections, you have to go to the library folder, open the file nextconfig.h and enable serial debugging. Then you have to change the lines define db serial and define next serial. Now we can start to look at our coding. After the include of the library, we have to declare each object of our screen we want to use later. Here, text number, button plus and button minus. We use our notes from before to fill in the IDs and names. They have to match exactly. For each field, we have to create a buffer to hold the text. Make it long enough, otherwise you risk crazy behavior of your Arduino because of buffer overflow. At the beginning, we fill it with zero, which means it is empty. Next, we have to register all objects in a list. Again, just copy and paste here. As a next step, we have to define the behavior of the different buttons. This is done by defining a so-called callback function. We name the function for the plus button, plus button pop callback. Pop means that the release event of the button will be used. If we would use push, the reaction would be when we push the button. I will show the difference later on. For now, we only define that when the plus button is released, the sketch writes a debug message, increases the number by one and displays the resulting number in the text field of the LCD. For the minus button, we have to define a similar thing. To show you the difference, here I use the push principle to react on the pressing of the button, not the releasing of it. Now we are nearly finished. In the setup, we have to initialize the device with the command next in it and register the different functions defined in the last step. Now the sketch knows that when a particular button is pressed or released that it has to call the respective function. Please make sure that the next init statement is placed before the serial begin statement. Otherwise debugging does not work properly. Because we already did the hard stuff, the loop is as simple as it can get. Just one line of code. Next loop, next listen list. Now we can upload the sketch and test it. It starts with the value 50 and if I press the plus button, it does nothing. Only if I release the button, the number is counted up, exactly as defined in the pop callback function. Now the minus button. This button reacts already on the pushing and counts down. Again, exactly as defined in our push callback function. In serial monitor, we see also the events and the debug messages. If you press a button and you do not see a message appear, something is wrong. Then check all the steps we just did. Did you check the send component ID? Did you define the button? Did you include it in the next listen list? Did you register it in the setup? Are all names and IDs correct? If everything is correct, it should work. Now we have created our first application with a nice looking user interface. As a next complication, I will include a new object, a slider. Dubai has the biggest tower in the world, the Burj Khalifa. I want now to let this tower grow according to the number in our display. To do that, we need to prepare three things. First, a slider object which has about the same size of the tower. It has to be vertical. Second, a picture of the tower cropped out of the original with the same size than the slider. And third, a picture from heaven 
also cropped out of the picture and the same size than the slider. We now can attach the two pictures to the slider. The picture of the tower is shown as one part and the picture of heaven is shown as the rest of the slider. After compilation and uploading the file to the Nexion display, we have to extend the Arduino sketch. After uploading the two files, we can start to test. We see that the plus and the minus buttons still work. In addition, we grow or shrink the tower according to the value in the display. This is achieved because the Nexion replaces the power picture with a heaven picture or vice versa. Cool! As a next complication, I want to add a second page. To get this, we have to add a new page and add a background picture. But how do we get to the second page? I want that we get to this page by pressing a next button. So we have to search for such a button and include it in our page zero. On page one, I want that we have to touch the tower to get back to page zero. So I define a hotspot across the tower. Please do not forget to select the field send component ID. Again, we have to include the four steps in the sketch and off we go. The display works exactly as intended. With what we learned so far, we can now build real complex applications. As an example, I use the fish tank example. You find a link to the code in the comment. Please be aware that I simplified it somehow for this tutorial. If you use the original, you might be overwhelmed. The fish tank example is designed to manage an aquarium. It has seven pages where four are very similar. First, we have to set the real-time clock attached to the Arduino. Next, we can go to the pump and switch it on or off or let the Arduino do it automatically. The same way, we can also change the UV light and the feeder. If we return to the home screen, we always see the actual water temperature, which is measured by a temperature sensor. Of course, this sketch seems to be very complex, but if you go into it, you find for each object exactly what we learned in this video, and it is easy to understand. I hope this episode was useful or at least interesting for you. In the next few weeks, you will not get a video every week because I have other obligations and will travel a lot. I hope you understand. Bye.